What's up guys? 99% of crypto is scamming, pump and dumping, gaslighting, civil attacks, and Ponzi schemes. This is BSV included. So what's triggering this is a documentary called Line Go Up, The Problem with NFTs. And I highly suggest viewers of this channel to watch that doc because it's really good. The guy is very critical of cryptocurrencies and Web3, especially NFTs. And I think it's a must watch because it's a really good bear case for crypto. And I know folks try to say BSV is not a crypto, but the reality is it is lumped in with all the rest of the altcoins and all the stigmas that come with crypto because that's just the reality of the environment. And as I said, 99% BSV is included. I don't care what folks think. If it's not a crypto, it is for right now, the way it's being used. So this slight trigger warning on this video, but it, that video is, that doc is really good. The guy doesn't just criticize the crypto space. He did tons of research. He went into the Bitcoin history from the launch. He went into Ethereum and he actually participated in a lot of these communities around NFTs today. So he, he really did. And the first 20 minutes or so is him going through the history of all the cryptocurrencies. So it's not just somebody just, you know, taking a look at from the outside into the insanity of crypto Twitter and Reddit and stuff. He's he really jumped in, dove in and participated and used this stuff and he sees the issues with it. And he's pretty correct. I mean, even as someone who's bullish on Bitcoin at scale, it, it made me second guess a lot of things, right? Not not saying that I'm gonna pack up or anything, but just it was, it was a really thoughtful video and it's just something I wanted to talk about. The subject of this video is not just about that doc, but it's just what kind of triggered me to talk about this because a lot of the stuff he talked about and the, and the way the communities behave and how rabid they are, I see some of that in the BSV space too. And uh, another trigger for this was uh, my fellow contributor, Patrick Thompson at CoinGeek. He wrote an article titled it's over for digital art nfts and my opinion i thought the article was quite fair i'm sure i'll get crapped on for saying that but it, it was really simple in its critique and approach and talking about the landscape of nfts and bsv and he's right i mean simple supply and demand i'm not going to rehash what he said in that video but he got heavy criticism about it to the point where folks are even saying that coin geek should take the article down and you know so to be clear, I don't work for CoinGeek. I'm a contractor, but I'm not an employee, right? So, and I write for them on a recurrent basis and I enjoy what I do there. And it's just funny to see the criticism of CoinGeek because on one hand, I've seen one to say that, oh, well, uh, CoinGeek, their leaders, Calvin and Craig, are always talking about how all the ICOs and NFTs are all scams, but when they come on BSV, they pump it. Well, now we have somebody criticized who works for CoinGeek criticizing that very thing. And it's like, oh, well, you guys need to take this down because this is obvious propaganda. It's like, damned if they do, damned if they don't. So, you know, it's just no logic behind that. It's just, you know, however people feel. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, this, is, this applies to all chains. Folks don't like people criticizing their investments. And, you know, we've seen this type of, uh, act, this type of reaction and fallout from anyone criticizing like BTC, for example. In fact, that's that's why I mentioned gaslighting and sock puppetry. That's how arguably this crypto space is a mess in the first place is due to these types of tactics and behavior online. So it's just really funny. That's why I say BSV is included because it's, you know, oh, for the most part, it's not really any different, right? I mean, of course, there's more transactions on BSV than any other chain. Uh, on a daily basis, um, it, that's getting to be the case where it's over 50%. And, but still, right, it's still not in terms of true economic activity. It's not even matching in, in the real markets, like the, you know, day-to-day -day markets, equities, commerce, that sort of thing. So, um, just checking my notes here. But yeah, that's what I want to talk about. It's like the XRP army, right? And the, the moon boys talk about everything's going to the moon. It's just... You know, this, I've talked about this before. This idea that, and this the guy in the dock, he criticized this too. The idea that if you just buy somebody's NFT, that you can just sit and be lazy and not do anything, not do any work, and you're just going to be rich. We're all, and he criticizes that we're all going to make it. It's just, that's crazy. 
Like, it's just, if that's the case, right, then everyone should just go to ETH or Solana or some of this new stuff on BSV and just buy something and then just sit around and say, okay, we're good. I, I've succeeded in life. It, it's, it's absurd. It's freaking crazy, man. And I think that that concept just graded on the guy in the dock. And that's, that was one of the big parts of his critique. And it's just, it's silly, man. I mean, this, we, Bitcoin and crypto, not crypto, but Bitcoin is supposed to change the world economy. It's not supposed to be where, oh, I bought, I bought some ugly ass picture of an ape and now I'm uh, of a bored ape and now I'm, I'm just going to be rich. That doesn't change anything, right? And even if it does make that person rich, it doesn't make them wealthy. And I think that's the key difference here. So, okay. So that video ended up getting 2 million views in four days, right? So, you know, lots of folks are watching it. And I think in general, uh, myself, Patrick included, and the guy are emboldened because all crypto markets have fell across the board from December into January. And of course, and you know, there seems to be a slight bounce in February, but we'll see what happens. So people are really emboldened to speak out against this concept of Web3, I did write about it as well. I'll link to that in the description. But um, the, so the bear momentum is really strong on the other side, pushing against the cryptos because, you know, the prices are down from their recent all time highs. And I think we saw this similarly in maybe 20, early 2018. But, you know, now I think because the crypto stuff is starting to become more mainstream, there's more critics of it this time especially people who are objective and they kind of peer into the space and they say, this is just crazy. This is just really crazy. Um, in that video, in the documentary, the guy, he kind of hand waves BTC because he just looked at it from the surface level, mostly about the scaling. And, you know, he just kind of dismissed it because, you know, high fee coin, whatever. But he really dove into ETH because ETH was meant to be a counter to BTC, you know, as we know, Vitalik wanted to do all that stuff on core coin or Bitcoin at the time. And they, the core devs told him to F off. So he went and made, uh, Ethereum and he really destroys Ethereum. I mean, I, anyone who's not invested in ETH and watches this doc would come, would, should walk away thinking that Ethereum is really a horrible system. I mean, it, you know, I, I know a lot of folks in BSV have criticized Ethereum. But, you know, it, me coming from computer science background, I mean, it really highlights how just this, the, the idea that these guys made a computer, a world computer that has worse probably computing power than probably laptops from even the 2000s. I mean, it's single threaded, right? That's why the gas fees are so high. And it's just the f people are paying hundred dollars. It's just, I mean, we've talked about, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here if, if these BSV uh, folks are watching this video, but it's just, it's completely absurd, the idea of Ethereum. I mean, it will never work. I mean, I know that the coin is $2,500, right? But that doesn't mean that the blockchain actually works. We all know that, right? Because BTC hit 70K and it doesn't do anything. So, you know, it's just, but I think it reflects the whole clown world society that we're just in today in the, in the 20, 2020s. Okay. So overall, the point is that this NFT stuff is in a bubble. Now, will the bubble continue? I don't know. How long will it go? No idea, but it is right. I mean, it, it we just have to say it is, I mean, it, it has reached insanity at this point. I mean, even, even on BSV and on uh, Ethereum with OpenSea, I, uh, Verge just came out with an article. I'll try to link that too, where they also harp on to the criticism about it. And it's just the way it's being done right now is just so rudimentary and so silly. There's no controls by the original artists. Uh, a lot of these legacy platforms for artists are even having to put disclaimers up about stealing the art and copywriting and you might be sub liable. And because people are just going to all over the place and just copying these pictures and then launching them as an NFT, as an NFT. And it's just, it's, it, they're just trying to scam. I mean, that's all it is, right? I mean, just not much has changed from 2017, right? 
just replace ICO with NFT. That's it, right? So um, in August last year, I wrote an article um, on CoinGeek criticizing this whole thing, saying the NFT craze is equal to the dot-com bubble. And of course, the NFT bull run continued for months after I wrote that article to the point where a month later, I wrote a follow-up on BitPost saying that I might have been wrong. I'll be sure to link to that as well. Uh, it was based off some uh, a dev, I can't remember what, a prominent uh, entrepreneur in the crypto space released something called Loot, which is actually a pretty cool concept. And there was just tons of just fallout from that. I mean, positive fallout. And, you know, I talk about that in the article. I don't know where that project is now. Probably haven't done anything because you can't do anything on ETH. But um, that's... Uh, what I want to talk about in terms of, you know, even I've been saying it, you know, times just seems so short these days, but five months ago, I was saying the same thing that these guys are saying today, but you know, I look like, I look silly with the clown nose because after that stuff, con JPEGs continue to sell for millions, hundreds of thousands, and sometimes even hundreds and thousands on even the poor chain BSV. So, you know, but now it's it seems to be dwindling down. I mean, I'm seeing more attempts and more, uh, the scams are evolving, right? Like for example, what's happening on Relay X is, you know, anyone can mint just like on Ethereum, uh, OpenSea that um, people are doing the generator thing, which, you know, is contrary to what one might think, it's not a high cost. But they're doing a generator thing and say, oh, we'll release the rarity chart once we sell out. <laughs> so, and you know, I'm seeing stuff not sell out as much. So it's just really funny to see how that's playing out. Okay. So, um, sorry, checking my notes here. Okay. So, yeah, I mentioned how I even question, right? Because um, I've seen a narrative in BSV over the years, over the last few years that Bitcoin, not even BSV, just Bitcoin as what was intended cannot truly succeed until this whole crypto space is cleaned up. And I think this is the premise of what kind of Craig is trying to do with the court system, right or wrong, whether you agree with him or not. I believe that's what he's trying to do. And that doc compared with this, all this recent bear stuff is making me start to think the same way. And the reason is that because this NFT thing is so absurd that... Even entrepreneurs who have the ability to create long-term businesses have an incentive to do some of this NFT stuff to make a quick buck, right? Because, you know, they're obviously going to be more well-equipped to pull off something like this and give it more credibility, right? So they have a higher chance of success in, in the short term if they do an NFT and, you know, can make a few thousand, few hundred thousand bucks. They have an incentive to do that instead of working on long-term businesses. And I think that is could be a factor in maybe potentially uh, stifling the uh, BSV adoption. And, you know, I don't even think you, one needs to listen to what I'm saying to know that that's true, right? Because you look at it, all the activity on the other blockchains. I mean, the premise is one, one ledger, right? One le one global ledger that people use. And if everybody else is using all this other stuff because it's easy to make money, well, it's kind of happening. But this happening within the BSV space too. I mean, NFTs are dominating right now. I mean, granted, Crypto Fights is the most used app, but, you know, that also has NF implements NFTs and, you know, a lot of the activity is due to chasing the drops, those loot drops, and then either melting them down for the Satoshis and the coins in them, or um, just playing the game and collecting, right? So it, it, but that's a much better use case, right? I mean, that one actually has utility. I mean, you get something like a sword and you can actually use it in the game against when you fight other characters or within the PVE environment. So um, it, that's that's what I wanna talk about here. That's how I wanna end it is that it, it, it is p p possible that until this whole craziness pops you know this whole thing just blows up that until then bitcoin can't rise from the ashes and um you know i i think that the craze because of the incentives it gives to even productive people to do and to do one of these nfts and i'm sure the same thing happened in 2017 with the icos 
because of that, it it takes away, it takes attention away and um, effort away from you know the work required to build long term businesses, which is fundamental, right? That is never going away. I know folks might think that with the meme culture and all this crap, but at the end of the day, if for example, if you got if you got a farm, you know you you for someone in there buying NFTs is not going to make the crops grow, right? Someone's got to go out there and tend to them, water them, making sure they get enough sunlight, making sure they they grow and become and they bear fruit, right? If if that isn't done, then there's not a future. There's not a productive future. And that's why I also have to respect the guy uh, who did the documentary because he didn't just come out and blow this crypto space up. He did tons of work and research. So even though I disagree with some of the stuff he was saying, I have to respect the work that he did. And that's the, that's the end point I want to make here is that that type, that's why I said, you, you know, some lucky people might get rich, but they don't get wealthy because wealth is not built in a day. It's not built in a week. It's not built in a year. It's built over years, over decades. And that's why the idea of this whole craze, it has to stop because the work and production long term is fundamental. And that's how Bitcoin will succeed. So I, I, that's the message I wanted to send in this video. Um, it's those types of things that will push stuff forward. Granted, this, this short-term activity, of course, is good. I'm not saying it shouldn't exist. I'm just saying that we're in a bubble and maybe the bubble will continue. Again, I don't know when it's going to end. Can't predict the future, but that does not subvert. It might subvert the, the need for the work in the short term, but that work, that fundamental long-term dedication to building something of value is what's going to make this chain succeed. All right, guys, let me know if any feedback. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.